guys and gals, and uh, welcome back to another Rant Time. This time we're doing physical and digital games. Uh, I want to address sort of last uh, time's, you know, rant. Uh, I was a little uh, repetitive when I said stuff. I don't know, I had a lot of that. I had that whole thing ingrained in my mind, but I'll try to be a little more cohesive this time. But the topic, as I've said, is physical and digital games. So you guys have asked me what I prefer, and I'll be, I'll be honest with you. Digital games I prefer nowadays, alright? Now this is sort of a big issue that's been going on. This is the whole... This is why the whole Xbox One and PS4 debacle happened, you know, that whole fucking console fanboy warfare, the pre-console fanboy warfare, mind you, alright, before the systems even really launched. But, yeah, so, what's wrong with digital stuff? Now, first things first, okay, when we talk about digital console stuff, that's where things nip people in the butt, okay? Nope, now, you can't compare this to, like, PCs. Well, you can't compare it to PCs, but you can't compare it to, like, mobile platform because they've always been digital so there's no physical content given on the mobile platform side it's always been a digital ecosystem the problem with consoles now is that we have become so ingrained to use discs cartridges floppy disks tape cassettes all that crazy shit to store our games and keep them physically safe all right now a lot of this is you go out, you buy a game for $60, $50, whatever, you know, whatever the price is, you have a physical copy of the game, alright? You have that, alright? That is yours to keep, alright? You can put that in any, you know, say you buy an Xbox 360 game physical, you can put that in any Xbox 360 you want, you can connect to live, uh, you might need an online pass for some to use the multiplayer features, but to play the game as it is, you don't need an online connection, you just stick it in and you play your game. Same thing with the PS3, the Wii, the Wii U, PS4, Xbox One, all that stuff, okay? You you have a physical disc for the game. You can put it in any device. You can play it. You can do whatever you want, okay? That's the beauty of physical stuff, and it makes sense because you buy games for $60, okay? Again, I reiterate that, $60, $50, not chump change. But we've entered a world, ladies and gentlemen, where that's about to change. Now, some of you guys might be pissed when I say this. You might be like, Mudahar, you're wrong. But listen to me carefully here. Okay, we're reaching a world where the internet is expanding to many different parts of the world, okay? To this day, the internet is not everywhere, okay? Even in, like, major parts of the world where the internet has become so ingrained, it's still not available in every single corner of the area. There's a lot of people who operate on, even still on dial-up, uh, some of them can only have, like, satellite broadband, which, you know, slower broadband, they have, like, throttling, they have data caps, they have all this crazy stuff. Not everyone has a fiber cable connection, you know, like some people do. All right, that's the world we live in. But for those people, digital has become such a convenience for them. And let me give you an example. You know, back when Grand Theft Auto V launched, I had a choice. I'd go outside to GameStop, okay? I would give the $5 down and pre-order the game and get the, you know, blimp pre-order bonus or something and a poster or some shit. Or I could go on the PlayStation Store, buy it for the same price and get it digitally. Now, why did I do it digitally at that time? Why did I, why did I not go to GameStop? A was partially because I was a lazy motherfucker, but B, the most important part was that I couldn't really pick this game up at midnight, you know? I mean, I could, I could pick it up the next day, but it is so convenient. Because let me tell you what happened. You buy the game, all right, you leave your uh, PlayStation 3 on, um, and, you know, it downloads, all right? And if you have Plus, it downloads, you know, as part of that, okay? This is just the PlayStation 3, Xbox, I don't know if it launched Xbox 360 Day 1 Digital, but I don't know, PS3 sort of does that a lot, a PSN. So, I download the game at midnight, I go to bed. Now in the morning, I have to go to a class, you know, university class, and I have to go to work, okay? So I had a lot to do that day. I ended up coming home that, you know, evening, when the stores were, you know, they, they I, don't th I don't think I could have gotten to a store at that point. So I came home that night, all right? This game was ready. My PlayStation 3 was turned off, I powered it on, I went to the PS3 section, and Grand Theft Auto V was there. Now, I did this with The Last of Us and every other game. You know, really a, a recent sort of title, unless it's like a, you know, fucking Metal Gear game, which I have to buy physical, but I'll get to that later. I come home, this game's ready to be played right there and then. I don't have to fucking put the disc in, I don't have to, I mean, I have to patch it, but even then, I think the patch downloaded by itself or something like that, I think it had a day one patch. Um, it didn't have to install the game because it was already installed, so I never saw an install screen, and it was just so damn convenient. You power the game on, it fires you on into the first mission, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Alright, that is the beauty of day one sort of digital. Now, physical games, you can do that too. 
People are like, just go to Amazon, put an order down, and it'll come into you day one. But see, here's a problem with that too. That also is dependent on where you live as well. Some of these orders, I've ordered off Amazon and numerous other sites, and I've never, I mean, I've gotten my stuff for the most part on day, on the day it came out. Sometimes I didn't, you know what I mean? There's, there, there's that environment over there too. Over here, you got it. But also what digital gives you, you know, which is why I prefer it in a sense, is that it gets rid of a wear and tear. Now, the issue with digital is that I understand it will not always be there, okay? There is a there is a chance, and it exists wholeheartedly, that this stuff will be gone one day. These Xbox Live servers, the PlayStation Network servers, are not running till the end of time. You know, if Sony and Microsoft go defunct, I don't really think they have a policy in place like Steam where you can at least download the games and burn them to drives and, you know, keep them forever. I mean, when you do it on Steam, I believe, like, every game there, when you buy it digitally, it is yours. When Steam goes under, I mean, if they ever go under, you can fucking download those games and burn them to your drives or whatever. I don't know if Origins does that too, but that's what Steam does. So, the thing is with that, it gets rid of a wear and tear effect, okay? Alright, now again, you know, like I said, wear and tear effect gets rid of that. And I wholeheartedly understand that you're not completely owning the games. But here's the thing. I've had discs, and I'm a fairly, very, very decent, like, owner. But, you know, there's times where kids could come over, alright? And it's happened to me where, or like, you know, my Xbox 360 might have nudged, okay? And somebody could take a shit in the other side of the world, and it could affect my 360, and the discs will get scratched. With digital games, discs don't get scratched. If my hard drive breaks, if my console busts, I, I, I replace it, I log into my Xbox Live account or PlayStation Network account and I re-download it and it's there in its entirety. There's no scratching, there's no nothing. Yes, there's intensive hard drive usage, but that's a little, you know, less to worry than optical media. So in that case, you get rid of a wear and tear. A lot of the Vita games that I have, I purchased off the PSN store and I have them digitally. And when I want to hot swap between them on the card, I just plug them into the PlayStation 3 and do a Switch. So you get sort of that factor over there. You don't, especially in portable gaming, you don't have to carry like a fuck ton of cartridges with you here and there. You know, you can just load them all into an SD card that is provided with the system or you can, I mean, for Sony's case, you have to buy like an expensive proprietary card. But still, you get to carry as many games as you can around that, you know, as you can store on that card. You're not limited to that one game. And this is great for people who are traveling. But yeah, that's the benefit of really the digital. And the thing is, when you look at the next gen systems, and, you know, I'll include the Wii U in that too, but I'm specifically talking about the Xbox One and PS4, is that when you buy a game for them, all right, for those of you who don't, like, own the systems yet, or, you know, they're, you know, you're on the fence about it, let me tell you a little thing, and this is the PS4, uh, the Xbox One does it as well. For example, Battlefield 4, if I put that into my PlayStation 4 for the first time, it actually installs the game entirely. Um, it, it installs like a little chunk, for, at least for the PS4, and you can play a little bit of it until the multiplayer and campaign installs while you play it. But rest assured, that whole game installs onto your PlayStation system, and it's like 39 gigs or so. Now, let me tell you something. If you're installing the whole game anyways, when it's not even running off the disc, when the disc is only there as a verification pass, similar to a PC, when you buy PC retail games, um, they'll ask you to put like disc one, two, or three in just as a verification, but the whole game runs off your drive. The, it creates a PC environment where people can just go digital. I mean, that's why Steam is so popular. No one wants to deal with this. You go on Steam, you log into your account, it's easy to pay for games, and you can just download them there and then. Alright, and the download servers are very decent, okay? Again, it does require a very good company that is ethical enough to do that for you. Um, digital on the console still isn't that great, you know, if you look at the play PlayStation 3, you know, at least Sony at least is giving good deals with games, Microsoft occasionally does it, but, you know, both sides aren't as great as, you know, something like Steam, even Origins to an extent, or, you know, any other PC environment like, you know, G GOG, good old, good old games, and, um, Gamers Gate and all the other, disorder and everything, okay, it's not like that, alright, so digital, in a sense, at least for me, when you ask me that question, I do prefer the digital side because there are a lot of advantages to it. Again, I understand. Physical ownership of games are important, but you have to also figure it out from here, alright? The way we play the games now are also different too. You know, if you asked me back in the day on the PS2 era, yeah, of course you'd go digital disc. Back then we didn't have fucking humongous hard drives in our systems. Back then games didn't have to be installed. The game installation thing kicked up on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 launched. 
All right, there are games on both platforms where you have to install them to the drive to play. And now these systems come with drives that that are, you know, they're 500 gigabytes, they're fairly large. You can swap the PS4 drive out of, and when you put the disc in, you still have to install the whole thing. So in a sense, why not just download it, you know, and not have to worry about the whole disc? You know what I mean? When on the PS4 or the Xbox One, you can download your games. You don't have to go switch discs. You can just start, uh, you can just choose a game and start it up. And it even gets rid of multi-disc game issues too. You can download a multi-disc game and just play it right there and then. You don't have to worry about swapping discs. I mean, I can, I'm used to swapping discs too ever since, you know, gaming began, especially with the PS1 era. But yeah, so we've entered a day and age where, you know, digital isn't looking as bad. Now, price-wise, it needs to be fixed, at least on the consoles. At least with Steam, you know, the sales on there, even on Origins, man, they're crazy. Steam gives you entire... I mean, Steam, for example, gave me the entire Deus Ex collection for $14. I haven't seen any sale like that on the PS3 or the um, Xbox 360 front. Now, I don't know when that'll ever come, but... You know, hopefully when that day comes, digital will become a lot more promising. But you know, tell me what you think. Do you like? Do you, do you do you do you feel that physical ownership is so necessary in games? You know, do you feel like you should physically own it? I mean, there's a lot of people who, you know, they'll purchase movies off iTunes or whatnot, or they'll buy they'll buy music. They're not buying albums anymore. I don't I I don't really see people buying albums anymore. They buy like the actuals, or they'll buy the album digitally because it's so easily available like a touch of a button same thing with movies you know do you think games in the same way could be treated that way as well um or you know do 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 you are you still so hard dead set on physical why or you know do you think you can make the transition to dig digital tell me what you think again this is my opinion okay and it's, it's an opinion all right you know <coughs> people form them uh but yeah that's personally what i think so if you like what you saw, like, comment, subscribe. This is Rant Time. And again, feel free to give me a topic in the world of gaming. You know, if you ever want to hear a thought on it, or if you ever want to hear me talk about it. And I know some of these rants, you know, sometimes it's where I kind of really get pissed, or sometimes I don't. This is one of the more calmer ones. But yeah, again, just give me some topics. Tell me what you think. Uh, by the way, if you're all wondering what game is on the screen, this is Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Chaos Theory HD. Um, it is uh, part of the HD collection. I picked it up for like five bucks on um, on the uh, PlayStation 3. I believe it's only on the PlayStation 3, but feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, basically, if you haven't played this game, you should go out and play it. It is one of the best games of all time, if you ask me. I'm a, but then again, I'm a huge stealth action fan. This is Chaos Theory. Mind you, if you're picking up the HD collection, uh, it comes with all three games. They're all really amazing, but the fact is, the first two games, uh, Splinter Cell and Pandora Tomorrow, um, on this HD collection, kind of chug on the PS3, but this game works fine. But, you know, again, for five bucks, I'm not complaining. This is Chaos Series. So, yeah, if you ever wonder what game I'm playing, I will mention it in the... Uh, I will mention it in the description below, key it in the beginning, and I'll sometimes mention it at the end. But, for now, yeah. <laughs> this is me, Mudahar, and I am out.